Hello, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you the search engine for IPs. This is a really cool open source intelligence tool that allows you to find any service or thing on the internet based on a description. Uh, you can see images. You, you can do crazy things with this. You can do lots of good things. Like if you're trying to track down a malware command and control server, this is an insanely helpful tool. Uh, you're trying you're trying to test your own security, and you can do things that are a bit more questionable with this. It's also, in my opinion, very reasonably priced. Uh, the cheapest plan is just $50 for a lifetime, then there's a $69 a month plan, and then it gets more expensive. Of course you wonder, if you've watched my Windows XP videos, how did they find these Windows XP machines? There are, according to Shodan, there are 1,500 Windows XP machines exposed to the internet. There could be more. Uh, now let's look at United States, because that's where I have hosted every uh, Windows XP machine that I have exposed. There are a few of these that look like genuine residential IPs. Now, the weird thing is pretty much everyone I've seen on here is running Service Pack 2. Is that because uh, the Telnet just doesn't show it anything higher? I'm not totally sure. Then within these, because, of course, if they're on residential IPs, okay, this one might not be. Uh, I'm prob I should probably blur this because I don't want to cause them any trouble. Uh, no, it's just just Telnet open. Okay, so this one is probably not gone. They will block outgoing SMB so that this cannot happen because those vulnerabilities require SMB. So even if you did, you're not getting in. Now, it's not just outdated things. We can do a lot of other things. Like we can do HTTP-title and find a website called a certain thing. Uh, you could... For example, if you wanted to find servers that call themselves Google, again, it's dot, not dash. And that, of course, you could just use a regular search engine for, but you might find other things. And this is also a good way uh, of, if you're trying to deal manage phishing sites for your company, this is a good way of doing that because uh, you will catch things that are not Google that say they're Google because we're not searching. We can even uh, do a negative filter so that we would only find Google from ISPs that are not Google, uh, which is very likely to be a mixture of partners and uh, phishing sites. Now, let me show you some other cool things this tool can do beyond what we could do just by end mapping. So we'll go look at maps and we can find, uh, got to put something in. So... My understanding is it doesn't use a credit if you just put, uh, if you don't put a filter. So we could do HTTP, and we can see where do the most web servers. Uh, now currently this is, I, I just zoomed in too near where I am, but uh, we can see a few on uh, this. We can see a few here, a huge cluster here. And then if we go down, uh, I, I don't know if that's going to show up because it wasn't zoomed in when we first searched. Uh, one of the interesting ones I saw in here that we could also search for, uh, and this is one of the more dangerous ones, is an exposed modem interface. And that's uh, one of the many uh, good ethical uses for this kind of a tool, is you can uh, you can put in your own IP address, and you can see if anything's exposed. I've already done it. And we can try this with my NordVPN IP. And the only thing we can find, because of course NordVPN IPs are going to be shared, is... The way that is some uh, torrenting activity, uh, which, given I haven't done any of that anytime recently, is not me, but it's somebody using NordVPN. Because there's no, no, not going to be any exposed activity. I think Nord used to have port forwarding. Now we can look at the images, which is kind of the fun. I, I don't think it's the, well, I guess you can put in filters. It, it's If you're using it in bulk, it's not the most practically useful tool. But every time you open this page, uh, you figure out that someone should have paid more attention to cybersecurity. So there, there's the webcams, which uh, th this one is kind of scary because this looks like this is someone's office. Uh, this is a gas station, I think, which actually they, they might be okay with it. This is, I, I don't know. And there, there's so many of those. And I, I'm genuinely, given how hard it is to get, like, a, your own IPv4 to expose to the internet, I genuinely don't know how people misconfigure these. I don't know if it's, like, an LTE hotspot or something. Let's click on one of these and see what the ISP is. Because I, I just don't... 
Like, I, I don't know. There must be an explanation. If anyone knows why there's so many of these, I'd love to know. Just looking at what the Shahi net. Wow, that's an obscene number of open ports. Are they all the same thing? I Okay, may, maybe I'm going to guess. And these seem like different. Okay, I'm going to guess there's some legitimate reason for this to be exposed because it looks like they set this up on purpose. But a lot of these are just kind of curious. Now, the other thing you can see a lot of are these screens. It'll also capture screenshots of websites, I believe. Uh, and these are, you can get these if it's a remote desktop. Now, this is not a security issue in and of itself. Although if you look, a lot of these look like desktop operating systems rather than server, which should not be exposed to the internet. And here's a Windows Server 2003 system, which is the server version of Windows XP. And it'll even show, if you go to it, what the vulnerabilities are. So this server should not be exposed to the internet. And here's another one that looks like it's... I just... I, I, I don't know how or why these are exposed to the internet. I, I don't know. I, I just cannot comprehend a reason why anybody would ever do that uh, with no authentication. Now, you can also do some reconnaissance on domains. So if you want to know. Uh, so let's do the vulnerable WordPress site that I accidentally leaked, but it didn't even matter. Nothing happened with it. I thought I'd set this up. I, I didn't. I don't know if the stuff I used was too new if the scanners didn't catch it, but let's see what it looks like to a hypothetical threat actor. So here we go. This is what we want. Uh, this is our, our site, and we can find out quite a bit. Now we find our IP address, which I've also used for other things, so this IP address is well known. Uh, we can see what version of WordPress we're using, what CMS, what database, jQuery, uh, all in one SEO, that's the only WordPress plugin it's catching. It doesn't catch the vulnerable one I installed because I guess it's not that common. It tells you what ISP is running this and you can, oh, that's going to go and search their entire network. So I'm just going to stop that because I don't need to do that. And these are the ports that are open. SSH, uh, which actually shouldn't be open because this is a VM within the, the, like there's no reason someone should be ac accessing that. Uh, 53, which is DNS. 80, which is the site and HTTPS. So we didn't expose the MySQL to the internet. That's good. I, I actually thought I had, but okay. Defaults and firewalls are genuinely pretty good most of the time. Okay, so here here is Apache. This is just, and here it's going to show everything wrong. <laughs> Three hundred and sixty security vulnerabilities. And we have an exposed Samba with no authentication. Uh, I, I didn't even know I had installed that one. Okay, how has this not been pwned yet? Maybe I need to check it again and just verify that it hasn't been pwned in some way that I didn't catch. Uh, okay, these are... You can actually... You can also go and search this by severity instead of 10... But this is only on Windows. You always have to read these before assuming. Uh, I don't think this matters because no browser uses Flash anymore. Another SWF vulnerability. Remote file inclusions vulnerability in DM albums. Do we have DM albums though? A URL. Okay, okay. This is this is like this is the actual uh, every uh, system admin's worst nightmare. I don't think I have Elementor. Another reason why using a nulled plugin is not a good idea. Other thing you can do with this is you can search subnets. So, uh, for example, we'll use my server again so that we're not breaching anybody else's. But we can also search for a range if I do it right. Got to do. We got to do net, and that will find everything running on my server. Because most dedicated bare metal servers that you buy will come with a 29. Uh, now, because IPv4s are kind of rare, the really cheap ones might just come with one. But most of them will come with a 29, which is great if you want to run multiple services. There are many legitimate reasons, but this is an absolutely not an anonymization technique if you're running a lot of stuff on the same server. So you can find out I'm running quite a bit of stuff on this server. 
none of which is at all sensitive. So <laughs> the, yeah, you're not getting anything. And the rest of these don't have any data because there's no VM. And of course, you can use the top ports again, which is good uh, because if you were to see something you weren't expecting, like if you see a 445 on any server you own, you have made a security mistake. Unless you're unless you're me and you like exposing things to the internet to see what happens, you don't want 445 on the internet. I'm actually going to make a video about firewalls and SSH. So if you do want to use something that is not secure to expose over the internet, it's possible, but not like this. This is not good. And here, I, I just manually did this by putting it in the host. I'm going to blur it out, of course, is what you want to see for your residential IP. No information is available. That means you have no ports open. Nobody from outside of your network is getting into your network. Uh, unless you're hosting something, port forwarding, know what you're doing. This is what you want to see. If you see anything else, you may have a security problem. I was just thought I would try Windows 98 and 95. And it seems like either Shodan cannot identify them or there I, I probably Shodan cannot identify them or nobody. Okay, I found a Windows 95. So this could just be a really old, some sort of cache. Yeah, there's probably a security problem here, but I, I think it may actually just be reflecting from some sort of uh, uh, Windows 95 that tried to access their site. So that's going to be all for this video. I hope you learned something. Uh, I just thought I'd mention there is another, because I'm not sponsored, there's another service called Census which works similarly to Shodan that you may also want to look at. And I really don't recommend end mapping anything uh, that isn't yours or even that is yours because someone in the middle might file an abuse complaint. So this is a much better way of achieving the same thing. That's all for now. Bye.